Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock so it's like we're doing everything together. We will enter the company's financial information and capital structure into my Excel model. Then we determine whether a stock is a buy or a sell. At the end we calculate and analyze the financial ratios. The company we're going to look at is Haynes Brands. And this company is a clothing apparel manufacturer. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $5.6 billion. So that's the value of the company according to the stock market. And they're trading at $15.97, so that's one share of stock. And to value a company, you estimate the future free cash flows and discount that back to today's value. And that's what we're doing in this video. So right now I'm pulling their actual free cash flows. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And now I'm going to pull the net income, which is the profit and loss on the income statement. And this includes non-cash items, where free cash flow does not include non-cash items. Now I pull the revenue, which are the sales on the income statement. And the revenue increases a little bit each year, which is nice. You'll notice in 2017 their net income was much lower. I've seen this on a bunch of other videos I've done. The US government applied a one-time tax penalty in 2017 to lots of companies that kept money overseas. So this was a one-time thing, so it shouldn't affect net income in the future. Let's look at the capital structure. We need the interest on their debt, that's $178 million. And let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. We'll go to the liability section. Current debt of $115 million, that's debt due within 12 months. Long-term debt of $3.3 billion, that's debt due after 12 months. They pay 5.3% interest on their debt. Let's get the effective tax rate because interest payments are tax deductible. $680 million of income before tax and $79 million of taxes. Effective tax rate is 11.5%, so the cost of debt is 4.7%. To get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And this company has a beta of 1.64, so the stock moves about 1.5 times the market, or a little more than that. We're going to calculate the current ratio later, so we need the current assets. Current assets are assets that a company can liquidate into cash within 12 months. And the current assets are 3.2 billion. Let's see what that is made up of. 328 million of cash, 815 million in net receivables, 1.9 billion of inventory, and 174 million of other. So they have lots of inventory, which makes sense for the type of company they are. We also need the current liabilities to calculate the current ratio later. That's 1.8 billion. And that's 115 million of current debt almost a billion of accounts payable and 531 million of accrued liabilities. Let's look at that stockholders equity, that's 1.2 billion. Stockholders equity is total assets minus total liabilities, that's 3.6 million of common stock, 1.5 billion of retained earnings, so that indicates they've been operating profitably in the past, negative 617 million of accumulated other comprehensive income. These are unrealized losses on securities it holds. Unrealized means it hasn't sold those securities yet to realize the loss. So this could indicate that future losses are maybe imminent. Let's look at the income statement to get their operating income. That's 889 million. We need the operating income to calculate the interest coverage ratio later. Let's look at the capital structure. Cost of debt is 4.7%. Weight of debt is 73%. Cost of equity is 15%, weight of equity is 27%. The WAC is 7.4%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. That's up here in blue. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 4.3 billion. Now we need to discount those dollar amounts back to today's value. And we do that using the weighted average cost of capital and we get a value of the entire company, $5.6 billion. We divide that number by 348 million shares and we get an intrinsic stock price of $16. They're trading at $16, so they're trading at intrinsic value according to my model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at 11.24, so they're saying the stock is overvalued. 
Let's look at where the stock has been trading. So it looks like it's been on a steady decline over the past few years, but during coronavirus it has come up in price. I would think this company should do well during coronavirus. Let's look at a financial ratio to see if we get more information. They have a really good PE, a really good price sales, and not such a great price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see a PE below 15. They're at 9.3, so investors are willing to pay $9 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5. They're at 0.8. So investors are paying 80 cents for $1 of sales. That's a great ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5. They're at 4.5. So investors are paying $4.50 for $1 book value. Good current ratio, really good ROE, and a good interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so that's really good. They can cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%. They're at 49%, so they're providing great value to their equity holders. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT, which is operating income, over interest expense, so they can cover their interest payments five times. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Capri and Levi's, same industry as Haynes. And Haynes is in the middle. If their numbers in green, they're better than the average. They're in red, they're worse than the average. So in terms of PE, they're a little better than the average, but they are worse than the average in price sales and price to book just because the other companies are doing so well. So if you see a really good price sales ratio, don't just assume it's good. Compare it to similar companies and then you'll know if it's good or not. The current ratio is right in the middle of three companies. They have the best ROE by far and their debt is highest. They're the largest company by market cap. So I'll show you how I came up with the future free cash flows. The way I calculated it was I first needed to calculate revenue and the way I calculate future revenue is I look at the prior four years of revenue and I take the median change. So the 2016 to 17 change was an increase of 6.8%. The next year was an increase of 4.9% and the next year was an increase of 2.3%. So the median of the three numbers is the middle, so 4.9%. The way I got the $7.3 billion of 2020 revenue is I took the 2019 actual revenue of 6.9 billion times 1 plus the median which was 4.9% and that's how I got to 7.3 billion. The same thing for 2021, I took the 2020 revenue times 1 plus 4.9%. The way I calculated 2020 net income is I took the 2020 revenue times the median net profit margin. The net profit margin is net income over revenue. So in 2016, the net profit margin was 8.9%. And in 2017, it was 1%. That's 62 million net income over 6.4 billion revenue. And 2018 was 8.1%, and 2019 it was 8.6%. So to get the median of these four numbers, you have to take the middle two numbers and take the average. So you put these four numbers in order from smallest to largest. So smallest is 1%, then next smallest is 8.1, then 8.6 and 8.9. So you exclude the 8.9 and 1.0 because that's the smallest and largest. And the two middle numbers is 8.1 and 8.6. And the average of those two numbers is 8.4%. Now to get the net income, I take the 7.3 billion times the 8.4% and that gives me my net income of 612 million. I did the same thing for 2021. I took the revenue of 7.7 .7 billion times the 8.4%. And to calculate the future free cash flows, I took the net income times the median free cash flow over net income. So the median free cash flow over net income is taking these two numbers, because the outliers are 97% and 919%. So the average of these two numbers, so the average of 101% and 117% is 109%. To calculate the 666 million, I took the net income of 612 million 
times the 109%, that's 666 million. I did the same thing for 2021. I took the net income of 642 million times 109%, and that's how I got 699 million. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know if you have any questions.